The gambler's fallacy is a cognitive bias that deceives us into believing that an event is more or less likely to happen because of a previous event. Hi, I'm Graham Newell with more of the latest brain research on what motivates us to make good and bad financial decisions. My speeches and webinars teach how to recognize the signs that an impulsive decision might be likely. Click subscribe and the bell below to see more videos. The gambler's fallacy is sometimes called the Monte Carlo fallacy because it was auspiciously named at the sumptuous Grand Casino more than a hundred years ago. On August 18, 1913, the roulette wheel came up black 29 times in a row. The odds of that happening are 1 in 136 million. This amazing run became so iconic because the gambler's fallacy caused so many people to lose such a crazy amount of money. Bets on red just got more and more insane. After that many blacks, gamblers believe the next roll just had to be a red. What about you? Do you have little rules or rituals to boost your luck at the gambling tables? Share some of those with me now in the comments below. Now the rational side of our brain knows that any spin of the roulette wheel has absolutely no correlation to the previous spin. But our very flawed human brains are hardwired to look for patterns where none exist. Pattern recognition was evolution's shortcut to helping us to remember a lot of stuff using the fewest brain cells. That's why we tend to see patterns everywhere. A family has had three girls in a row. The next one is just bound to be a boy. A gymnast flubbed her pirouette the last three times, so she'll surely nail it this time. You haven't gotten a traffic ticket in years, so you're certainly due. Back in the 1930s, extrasensory perception, or ESP, was all the rage. Dr. Joseph Rhine set out to find the world's most accomplished mind readers. So he asked hundreds of people to predict the order of random symbols. Those who guessed right moved to the next round. The participants who predicted correctly round after round were then declared to be telepaths. But Dr. Ryan hadn't discovered telepaths, he got duped by the gambler's fallacy. Simple probability predicts that if you test enough people, someone, anyone, will eventually get every answer correct. But the stormy world of finance is where the gambler's fallacy has its most profound impact. Investors watch a stock go up for a few days, then quickly sell. Just because a stock has gone up for five consecutive days doesn't mean it's less likely to go up again the next day. Others hold on to stocks that have fallen because they think further declines are less likely. Unfortunately, most of our brains are really bad at statistics. We believe short-term losses and gains will come back to the mean. This is generally true for the long term, but the gambler's fallacy tricks us into believing the same is true in the short run. Spin the roulette wheel a million times, you can predict the results fairly accurately. Spin it just 10 times, you've got no chance. Take a look at this series of numbers. Can you tell me what the next number should be? If you guess 13, you'd be right. Those are the prime numbers. Now look at this series of numbers. What's the next number? Do you see the pattern here? Well, there isn't one because those were just five numbers I chose at random. And this is the way markets work much of the time. We desperately look for a pattern or a cause, but many times those changes are just random fluctuations. Yet the analysts are paid to analyze and we feel better if they come up with a reason, whether that reason's real or not. Most of us tend to think our successes are the product of our own genius, but was it skill or just dumb luck and random timing that led to our victory? If you'd like to hear the fascinating story of how survivorship bias was used in a World War II air raid, click on the info card right here. So next time you see a pattern, do a double check on your perception. Whether you were dealt aces or deuces, remember it's important to acknowledge that our tendency is to see causes that just aren't there. 
Right now, I'm working on another video about how cognitive bias lures us to make bad financial choices. If you'd like to be alerted when that video is completed, just click on my face below and subscribe. And be sure to click that bell as well. I've created tons more videos of how brain science can help you make smarter money choices. Click on this box to see the full list. I'm Graham Newell, and that's Better Decisions Through Brain Science.